sort of territorial. I was in Fort Lauderdale four years ago on an ISA convention doing a field trip or a tour of a botanical garden when suddenly I stumbled across several wild monkeys in the tree canopy. The botanical garden was known as the Bonnet House and there was a bit of a story about the monkeys that were at the Bonnet House. However, the actual reason the monkeys were there wasn't exactly a guarantee. But the rumor has it that these monkeys had escaped a local bar. And the bar owners had brought these monkeys there to attract people to the bar so they could sell more alcohol. Because it became quite like a experience to go to this bar and see these monkeys throughout the bar. That people would give treats and they would just hang around. Well, eventually the monkeys found their way out of the bar and found their way into the canopy. And they liked that more. They found... Uh, plenty of food in the canopy and people still fed them anyway so they just stuck around and they haven't really gone anywhere however the population has been dwindling for the last couple decades the population is said to be just three left of this third monkey tribe and they're all supposedly the same sex accidentally stumbling across those squirrel monkeys in the wilds in fort lauderdale led me down a road of researching monkeys so I could try to learn where they came from. And the one specific type of monkey just kept popping up. And those are the rhesus macaque monkeys. Those are an old world species of monkeys from the Middle East and Asia. And they had been introduced here to Florida as well. That species of monkeys was introduced to an island in the Silver Spring State Park. So the people would offer tourism and glass bottom boat tours and the movie Tarzan, allegedly, was also filmed with these monkeys as well. However, they don't believe that the monkeys were introduced from the movie Tarzan. They think that they were just from the monkeys that were introduced to the island next to the glass bottom boat tours. It turns out that the rhesus macaque monkeys are excellent swimmers. And not long after they were introduced to that island, those monkeys had escaped and become just naturalized in that area. Y'all see any monkeys? This way? Okay. Thank you. In 1938, the manager of a glass bottom boat operation reportedly released six rhesus macaque monkeys on an island in the Silver River to attract tourists to his boat tours. The released monkeys swam to the surrounding forest and increased their numbers rapidly. Rhesus macaques are an old world species of monkey that are not protected or endangered. Their range is from China in the east to Afghanistan in the west and they are highly adapted primates. They are mostly herbivores, feeding mainly on fruit but also eating seeds, roots, buds and bark. They are estimated to consume around 99 different plant species and 46 different families. Rhesus macaque monkeys are self-aware. In several experiments giving mirrors to rhesus macaque monkeys, they looked into the mirrors and groomed themselves, as well as flexed various muscle groups. While the macaque may be prolific, its existence has helped save countless humans. As sad and controversial as it is, rhesus macaques were used to help develop vaccines for countless potentially fatal diseases, like rabies, smallpox, and polio. October 25, 1999, the rhesus macaque became the first cloned primate. January 2001, the first transgenic primate. Andy carries genes from a jellyfish. There's no question that the macaques are thriving here in this ecosystem. They're feasting on all this different native vegetation. Hear that monkey call? I've never heard him call like that. So that may be some sort of sort of territorial dispute. I do believe that's what that is. But uh, oh my goodness! It's right out there. The more I dove into the wild monkeys that exist here in Florida, I realized there's a third monkey tribe. And this monkey tribe was in Fort Lauderdale, the same place I saw those original squirrel monkeys. However, I'd missed the opportunity the first time to see them because I didn't know about them. And while I was there in Fort Lauderdale, I made a special trip to Dania Beach to find this wild group of monkeys.
There it is, in the tree. Yeah. Yes, he is. Or is she? There's more. And a blue jay. This is the African vervet monkey. It's a bit of a mystery why this monkey's here, but it's believed that they were introduced by the Roosevelt family at the Dania Beach chimpanzee farm where they did biomedical testing. Now these guys have been left in the wild because they don't pose a real threat to humans. They're pretty docile, but they're well adapted to this area and they've thrived here. And there's three different populations in Dania Beach, but this one is the easiest to spot the monkeys. So after 10 years of knowing about them, finally having the opportunity to see the monkeys, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I would say so, right? The African vervet monkey can be distinguished from the rhesus macaque monkeys over at Silver Springs by their black faces with the white fringe around them, the white fur. Now the African vervet monkeys are a little bit smaller than the rhesus macaques as well and their populations are isolated from each other. These monkeys here are in Dania Beach, South Florida, Fort Lauderdale area. There's three different isolated populations of these vervet monkeys. These vervet monkeys have been found for at least seven to 10 years as far as I could see on iNaturalist in this area. It tells me that this population is probably not moving. After seeing so many monkeys appearing, I started to wonder just how many are in these woods, this patch of woods. I estimate the patch of woods to be less than five acres. So me and my father began to count. It was really hard because the monkeys were constantly on the move. These two were perched up eating some peanuts. But after tallying, and we're not 100% sure on the tally, we tallied up at least eight different specimens. There was other animals that also knew that the visitors and tourists were feeding these creatures. There's a boat tail grackle and there was a dove there too. But it doesn't take much to get these monkeys startled and rummaging around. Basically that's because they're a social structure. So if one monkey jumps and runs, all the monkeys think it's something important. And that's how these monkeys have survived for thousands of years. They look out for each other. This population was introduced, they believe, in the 1940s. The Roosevelt family introduced these monkeys for biomedical research to the chimpanzee farm here in South Florida. Rumor has it that a hurricane came and knocked out the chimpanzee farm and some of these monkeys escaped. I didn't find any facts to back that up. I do know that is how the Burmese pythons were introduced to South Florida, but I think what happened with these monkeys is that the biomedical research ended and the people just couldn't find it in their hearts to kill them, so they just let them free. There was a few monkeys to start with. Their population has kind of been solid but it hasn't been growing too fast three small populations this one i counted eight so that means they're not out of control there are no protections in place to protect these non-native species therefore these species once they go just like the first squirrel monkeys i showed you from the bar they go there's no protections in place however they did start a private uh, facility to preserve these monkeys it's called the african vervet project